we see here futures uh, lower on the screen. Dow futures off about 100 points as we head towards the open. Joining us now to talk more about the setup for markets coming into this week is Stuart Kaiser. He's the head of equity derivatives research over at UBS. Stuart, always great uh, to talk with you. So let's start with um, kind of getting the lay of the land as it relates to uh, the now sneaky, long, sneaky, durable rotation into value, out of growth. It's pretty much been six months with almost no let up in this trade. How are you guys thinking about it at, at this point as we, we kind of get out of earnings? So some of the headline risk is starting to abate just a little bit and we can get back to you know what our flow is telling us about the state of the market. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me again. Uh, yeah, you make a great point. It's, I think the only two times that trade has really paused was actually during earnings, um, when investor kind of focused, uh, shift back to fund shifted back to fundamentals and kind of the strong tech earnings, you know, provided a little bit of support, at least to those companies. You know, what we're seeing from a flows perspective is a lot of sponsorship for that cyclicals trade, uh, particularly in the option space uh, in energy and materials. Those stocks have just seen a tremendous amount of call buying, a lot of upside participation. And you know, I think I think for two reasons. One is is the recovery and growth, and two is I think some folks see that as a way to hedge their portfolio against inflation. So you've got two kind of reasons that that trade has worked, and and it's certainly um, very obvious in the in the volumes of calls, especially that we've seen over the last couple of months. Stuart, uh, large cap tech; those stocks have been hit uh, as we've gotten some of these hotter inflation reads. What's the next direction looking like for some of these stocks? You know, tactically speaking, we actually think tech is going to recover a little bit now that we're past that that strong inflation data and past the early kind of part of the month where you got a lot of economic data in the U.S. So, you know, basically, if you think of sequencing wise, you know, tech was under pressure, it stabilized a bit during earnings, and then it came under uh, you know renewed pressure again once that inflation data came out. What we're thinking slash hoping is that now that that inflation data has been digested a bit last week, that that'll give tech a little bit of room here to recover over the kind of next four to six weeks. But to your point, I mean, the inflation and rate story has really tripped up the tech trade. Um, a lot less retail participation in the market, I think, has also been a little bit of a headwind. So our view is tactically here, you can see semiconductors and large cap tech recover, uh, but certainly it, it is swimming upstream a little bit recently. Yeah, and Stuart, it's Julie here. I want to dig more into that chart that you sent us that we have up on the screen, which looks at call and put options on um, tech in the S&P 500. And, and obviously, we've seen a big pullback in both of those, but now sort of stabilization, I guess. Um, does that have any sort of forward-looking indicator for us? Can we sort of read anything into that as to what is going to happen next? I, th I think what we're reading into that is that, and good morning, Julie, sorry. Um, I would say what we're reading into that is just that positioning is a lot cleaner now than it was. Um, you know, you had a lot of people very bullish tech for an extended period of time. You know, seeing how those charts have evolved, I think just suggests that, you know, things are a little bit cleaner here. Hopefully people can, can trade the news rather than the positioning. But really, I, that's been one of the big challenges for tech, I think, is a lot of people were, were long exposure to that part of the market. Um, it's certainly come under pressure. The rebalancing and cleaning up of that position, you know, takes a little bit of time, and and hopefully we're through the bulk of it. But you know, so my read on that chart would be would be simply that hopefully that suggests that, you know, positioning is a bit cleaner, and from here we can start to trade a little bit more normally as opposed to from a, a an unwind type uh, type position. All right, we got about 30 seconds here to the opening bell on this Monday morning. Again, futures pointing uh, to some losses at the open. We talked at the top of the program about some of that merger news we had, the Warner Media discovery deal. We're going to talk uh, to Craig Moffat coming up uh, in about 15 minutes more about that deal. We see here live pictures on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. The MTA ringing the opening bell down there on the floor. I believe today uh, we see 24-hour subway service resume in New York City, if I am not mistaken. Uh, and so we see the MTA there celebrating uh, the recovery uh, back in New York City. Uh, city certainly been vibrant last couple of times. I've stopped in, sadly, of course, not a city resident anymore. Stuart, um, we were talking uh, kind of, you know, about that options chart you had and about uh, the cleaner shape of, you know, uh, I don't exactly know what, how you would, the board, let's call it that, right? Um, I, I wanna ask about the VIX in that context as well. We've discussed what you've seen in that in that board for a long time. And um, there was a point at which, and I think it might've been six or nine months ago we were chatting, that there was still a lot of caution being priced in via the VIX relative to how the market was performing. Has that started to normalize, especially with the VIX we see here right around 20, but having spent a lot of time under 20 in the last month or so? 
Yeah, it's a great question. And, and last week was quite interesting. You know, on that on the sell-off we had last week, you know, the VIX actually rose much more than you might have expected, um, given that 2% sell-off we had. So that, I think, would suggest that the market was a little bit complacent or perhaps a little bit under-hedged for that type of move. Um, and you also saw, you know, similar moves further out the term structure. So, you know, our view is there's still, you know, call it two points of extra vol premium priced into the to the shape of the curve right now. Um, and we do expect that to slowly squeeze out. But I think in a situation like we're in now where there's concern about the path of inflation, there's concern about Fed tapering, you know, there's a lot of regulatory and tax news out there. There's the occasional China trade war type discussion. I do think that premium is going to take a little bit of time to come out. And, and right now you could argue it's fair, you know, coming from the policy stance we're in. Um, the fact that the market's pricing a little bit more caution, kind of three to six months out, is probably not not unreasonable. So, you know, from our perspective, it looked like the market was a little under hedged in, in sort of shorter dated options. Um, there's a premium still in that three to six month space. But I think, you know, reasonably speaking, you could say that that premium is call it two points. And, you know, is that too much? You know, I, the beholder, I guess I would say on that one. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe old habits here that we learned, uh, you know, very quickly back at this time uh, last year. All right, uh, Stuart Kaiser with UBS. Stuart, always great uh, to get your thoughts. Thanks for jumping on. I know we'll talk soon.